Ladies and gents, one blue CG reaction, and this is Could Solar Storms Destroy Civilization? Solar Flares, Coral Marcy Jackson's by the channel Kuzguzat in a nutshell. The sun smooth and round and peaceful, except when it suddenly vomits radiation and plasma in random directions. Yeah, this sort of flares and coronal mass ejection or CMEs can hit Earth and have serious consequences for humanity. Yeah, this is one of those, one of the worst case scenario events, uh, not extinction event. Yeah, this won't kill people, obviously, but everybody, you know, you will always hear whenever news channel runs out of things, they talk about things like this, like CMEs, coronal mass ejections. Basically, sun blah, vomits out things. Basically, that hits uh, the you know Earth's magnetic field. Magnetic field, you know, shrunks down, you know, shrunks down, rebounds, and apparently every you know basically electric things that are working satellites, uh, you know, basically uh, lots of uh, power grids, everything just explodes if they are running on. There was a video, I think, I don't know, where from Argentina or something, that that shows how it would be. There wasn't a CMEs, I think there was just, you know, storm creating the effect, but there was such a heavy storm, it had similar effect that you could see all the power grids exploding, boom, 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 everywhere. There is a video of that. That is how it would be, but in the entire, not entire, one side of the earth where it hits. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just one side, not the entire globe won't be affected. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, uh, basically, you know, this will take out everything that we rely on. GPS, satellites, communication and everything. So uh, blackouts would happen immensely uh, depending on the time. If it's at night, I mean, chaos would break out in the major cities. People will die. I don't know how that happens. Or heard whenever there's a blackout, people panic and somehow people die. How the hell would blackout kill people? I mean, yeah, I get it if they are in the hospitals, but in the hospitals, there are such things as, you know, backup generators. So I don't know how that happens, but yeah. So CMEs are bad news. We won't be affected uh, physically, but yeah, everything would get destroyed. And, uh, you know, uh, lucky things would be just get shut off and has, will have some kind of damage, but most of the things would literally explode. So we have to build all of that, satellites, you know, power grids. So there was, you know, uh, Texas, there happened something in the Texas, right, where the, there was no power and there was no power for a long time. That would be the case at a lot of places for a long time. And rebuilding all that would require a long, long time. So it would hurt economy too. I guess there would be some kind of a depression where, you know, all the stock market falls and things like that. It's really effed up. We rely on uh, smallest things so much that even the simplest things, if uh, happens, entire economy suffers. Like, you know, last year, uh, statistically, what happened in last year didn't kill that much people compared to the other things, but yet it still affected everything. We had to go on a lockdown, everything got affected. Uh, simple thing as Brexit. I mean, Brexit shouldn't affect anybody outside of Britain, and yet that is going to affect, at the time it did, and even uh, it's gonna affect in the future, the world's economy. So, yeah, I mean, if this happens, it's a bad news. People will lose jobs, uh, there will be lots of issues. So, yeah, let's watch this one. Remember, this is Kuzgazad video, it might get blocked, so I have to put checker box there, but I guess we'll see. The sun. Smooth and round and peaceful. Except when it suddenly vomits radiation and plasma in random directions. These solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, can hit Earth and have serious consequences for humanity. How exactly do they work, how bad could they be, on, and can nice we work. prepare for them? While the sun seems pretty solid, it's actually like a very hot ocean. So hot that it rips atoms into electrons and nuclei. Oh. Technically, it is solid. I mean, it's not variable star, obviously. I mean, uh, there are lots of uh, planets that we found are in the Goldilocks zone, but most of those suns are, uh, you know, a variable sun. So it's, you know, gets bigger, it gets smaller, it gets bigger, it gets smaller. So that's an issue. Our sun is stable enough comparing them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Flowing around each other in a plasma. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field, similar to how the sun's gravitational field reaches out to the planets and shapes their orbits. But magnetism is very different from gravity. 
magnetism is one part of a dual force, electromagnetism. Electricity creates magnetic fields and magnetic fields create electricity. On the Sun, the plasma made of electrically charged protons and electrons creates a magnetic field as they move and this magnetic field then shapes the flow of particles. They're stuck in a dynamic feedback loop called a dynamo, which keeps the Sun's magnetic field alive. This magnetic field stores enormous amounts of energy and leaks out over the solar system. It carries with it a constant trickle of solar plasma like a light rain. That sun's magnetic field is really important. You think, ah, oh, what an annoyance. No, it's really important. It stops all the interstellar radiation to come and destroy our atmosphere. It stops that. It creates this bubble, you know. This bubble basically saves it from all the interstellar gamma radiation and God knows what. Lots of time there is a, because of supernova or something, there's a strong radiation coming. So this sun's ball gets smaller and smaller. But I don't think it has ever became smaller than the uh, Earth's orbit. So Earth has always been protected. Uh, not the gas giants, sometimes they, you know, it gets strong so much that gas giants goes out of it. But who cares about gas giants? There's nobody living there known as the solar wind, creating a sort of space weather. But it isn't always calm and smooth. As the sun's plasma churns and flows around itself, its magnetic field gets all kinked and twisted. This creates magnetic knots that build up enormous amounts of energy. When the magnetic knots break like a tangle of springs exploding outwards, the sun can vomit plasma and other awful things into the solar system. These solar storms come in many types, like solar flares, a tidal wave of high-energy radiation. They race through the solar system at the speed of light, sweeping up protons in the solar wind, accelerating them into a high-speed solar proton storm. Then there are coronal mass ejections, which rip millions or billions of tons of plasma from the sun's atmosphere, catapulting it through the solar system at speeds of up to 9 million kilometers per hour. When these monsters hit us, nothing happens on Earth. While even smaller storms can damage satellites, affect radio communication, or be dangerous to astronauts, for people on the surface, space weather is harmless. Earth's atmosphere protects us from the worst effects of a solar flare by absorbing the blast of X-rays high up in the atmosphere, well before it reaches the surface. The electrified plasma from a CME is deflected by the Earth's magnetic field, diverting the energy storm to the north and south poles, where energetic particles fall into the atmosphere, causing the atmosphere to glow and creating beautiful auroras. And Ooh, embarrassing. I was wrong. How that happened? I'm pretty sure CMEs would destroy power grids and things. They wouldn't be harmless like that. What the hell? How was, I, how was I wrong? This is embarrassing. As with any sort of weather, most of the time, things are fine. Sometimes there are hurricanes, though. Or in the case of the sun, solar superstorms. And we know that they happen once or twice every century. If one were to happen today, we would first detect strong solar flares, a sort of flash before the much more dangerous thunder. The thunder is a CME consisting of billions of tons of hot magnetic plasma that crosses the 150 ah. million kilometers between the Sun and Earth in less than a day. When it arrives, it... Ah, now I understand. I, I just got shocked there, man. Damn, CMEs are not uh, damaging like that, but of course they are. He was talking about small CMEs. And the one I'm thinking of was a giant one. Obviously, CME... Does, I'm like, what the hell? I, I always knew this about CME. And I'm like, my knowledge was wrong. But no, it's not. He was talking about smaller CMEs. Of course, they would, they would not affect much. But yeah, bigger ones, it destroys power grid and things. It causes a shock wave that violently compresses the Earth's magnetic field and transfers energy into the magnetosphere. And then it rebounds. But it can get worse. If the magnetic field of the CME is aligned to Earth's in just the right way, the two magnetic fields merge. As the magnetic cloud passes over Earth, it stretches the Earth's field into a long tail. Eventually, the energy stored in the tail becomes too much to contain. It snaps and explosively releases its energy towards Earth. Yeah, it rebounds. A geomagnetic storm has begun. A few hundred years ago, nobody would have cared. This storm gushing over the Earth is not relevant for machines made out of meat and bones. But it's very relevant for machines made out of metal and wire. Remember the dynamo? 
magnetism oh, creates. Oh yeah, that is so true, isn't it? Oh, I didn't even thought of that. Nowadays, electric cars are becoming a big thing. Even if they are not, even the petrol cars, petrol diesel cars, even they are dependent lots of on the you know ECUs and you know electric computers in the car. Everything connected with that. Even the car's engine. I mean, there was a fear that literally hackers could control cars because they can. Even the latest, you know, petrol, diesel cars, even they are controlled by these ECUs. So, that is so true, isn't it? This would fuck that up too. Oh, God. Even the cars would be affected. And only people who are driving those relics from the old time, old cars, as a collection in their car, if, they, if they're driving that, they, they won't even realize it. Only those cars would be running, I guess. Electric currents. Earth in the 21st century is covered in millions of kilometers of wires transporting electricity and a complex grid of machines like transformers that make this transfer possible. A CME's energy can induce currents in our power grid that can either completely shut it down or worse, destroy the transformer stations that keep our grid running. This has happened already, like when the Quebec power grid failed after a strong solar storm in 1989. But in general, our engineers know how to deal with these storms, and so we usually don't even notice. The last time a solar hurricane washed over Earth was in 1859, the Carrington event, the largest geomagnetic storms ever observed on Earth. Massive auroras occurred as far south as the Caribbean. In some places, they were so bright that people got up thinking the sun was rising. Luckily, we only had one sort of... Oh, that would be so awesome, isn't it? You could see this uh, auroras from, you know, even more far distance like Caribbean and things. I'm pretty sure when that auroras are strong in the north side, people from Canada says that even we can see it. I'm pretty sure. So that would be weird, isn't it? You've never seen, uh, you know, this and auroras because you've never been to South or North Pole. And then you see, look outside and there is this, uh, you know, auroras like dam. Modern technology, telegraph systems. They failed all over the world, shocking their operators and <laughs> chucking out sparks. Today, we have a... T yeah, people, if you don't know how those things worked, that is how people used to do it, slamming their nose. Not the hand with the nose. Had more technology, and our luck may run out soon. Another bad solar storm is bound to happen eventually. Not to scale, really. The storm as strong as the Carrington event missed Earth only by a small margin in 2012. Studies oh, yeah. projected that it would have inflicted serious damage to electronic systems globally, costing our oh, entire globe, goddamn. So yeah, it did happen in 2012, right? We did miss it. I mean, there was a big thing about that 2012 thing, like it's uh, some kind of a extinction event happening because of the Mayan calendar was running out or some shit like that. And you know, there were, there were lots of other theories at the time or two, but this thing become a thing like, you know, solar storm, we just missed it. That that gave people like a cop-out thing. Like people were like, oh, 2012 was supposed to be really effed up, but surprisingly we missed it. Like, you know, 2012 was always going to be CME. Mine calendar ran, ran out because of CME. No, you idiot, you're just nitpicking that. It just happened to happen at the same year. What if this happened at 2013? What would you say then? But yeah, I remember this was a big thing. People are also talking about this on news. Even at that time, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Up to $2.6 trillion to the US alone. The time to replace all the damaged systems was estimated at between 4 and 10 years. Oh, that would have hurt. It's hard to say how bad it could have been. Experts disagreed. Some assumed <laughs> there would just be temporary blackouts, but others worried it could be much worse. We won't know for sure until a big solar hurricane hits us. The probability of such an event is estimated to be 12% per decade. That's about a 50-50 chance of at least one in the next 50 years. Ooh. And there is more unsettling news. A 2019 paper found that even calm stars like our sun can create super flares every few thousand years. Eruptions orders of magnitude stronger than the strongest storms we have observed in the solar system. If such a storm hits us unprepared, the consequences could be catastrophic. It's hard to overstate how much we depend on electricity. It's not just the lights at home, it means no computers, Everything. no communication, no navigation. A sustained power outage might lead to a breakdown of the supply chain, water supply systems failing and hospital generators running dry, supermarkets not being refilled while food rots in the fields. The lack of power might make it extremely hard to reboot our broken power grid, taking years or decades to restart our starving civilization. Okay, time to panic. 
As much as daily newspapers might like for solar storms to send us back to the Stone Age, they probably won't. Yeah. Fortunately, even though solar storms aren't preventable, virtually all of their nasty side effects are. Even so if all this happens, there is a chance that everything could break into chaos, sure. And seeing how the how world uh, basically reacts to uh, events that is catastrophic like that tells us that we will probably go to the chaos side because nobody handles things better. But still, I like to think if something like that happened, we would pull ourselves together and, you know, figure out eventually. Because if, if simple, you know, electricity failing sends us into chaos, like it's some kind of a extinction event, that's just, that's just after, then we are dependent way too much on things. That doesn't say very good things about our, our species. We, we, we will not last if things like that happen. Eventually, we will basically die out because if we are dependent on simplest things, what does this say about our species? Scientists observing the sun have a few hours up to a few days to see a CME coming. And the engineers working the systems that keep the world running are Just well aware off. of the risks posed by solar storms. Transformers and substations can be taken offline. Short preventative blackouts, or in other words, by unplugging stuff. Engineers can open up extra lines to dissipate the extra power. And with investment and upgrades cheap compared to those other natural disasters require, we could protect the world's electric grid against even the nastiest of storms. But we do need to prepare. While the risk is manageable, it is real. For while our sun bathes us in warm... You know what? That's what I like the most. Not just shutting off. Make some kind of a storage system that stores all this energy rather than, you know, shutting things off. That would be even better. I like the idea of that. Like, people scared of hurricane. Let's find out to, you know, uh, channel that hurricane into the energy and store that and stop the hurricanes. Same thing with the tornadoes. Same thing with the, you know, this thing. Uh, so, you know, solar flares and CMEs. Let's find a way to store that energy rather than being scared of that. And pleasant light, one day it might send a monster our way that we better be ready for. This video was sponsored by you. Kurzgesagt videos are only possible thanks to your direct support. For example, Yeah, people support this channel. This is an awesome channel. I love all the science topics. I love the animation. You know, they, they actually contact, you know, very, uh, you know, advanced, I don't know how to say, very good scientists and take, you know, take all those, their take on the subjects that they're talking about. They don't just talk about it. They actually, they are so big now with 15 million subscribers, near 15 million. They actually contact the scientists. So these are really good topics they are covering. I love this. All right, people, those were CMEs and solar flares. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast, the playlist. Check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.